Hi, my name is Tommy and welcome back to my shop. So today I want to get back onto uh, working on my instruments that have been on, in the, the background uh, of my other projects for uh, like more than half a year now. So um, the first thing that I want to talk about is going to be tap tuning. So what is tap tuning? So tap tuning is a step that a luthier is going to take to ensure that all the components of the instrument are uh, to the proper frequency. So the same way uh, a musician would tune all the strings before it gets on stage, uh, a luthier is going to uh, tune the tone bars inside to the pitch that he wants. And in, in my case, I like to uh, hit the crown of uh, where the bridge is going to sit. To, and, I, and I want to have a perfect note. So in this case, this mandola has uh, the whole soundboard already tuned up and I'll show you in a minute, I'll, I'll hit it uh, and you'll be able to, to see the rating on the stroke tuner. So in this video, what I want to do, because this the, the soundboard is already done, I want to focus on the backboard. So the backboard is half done. I've carved the, carved the inside last year and then um, uh, I'll do the outside and then uh, tune it and then uh, do the glue up onto the, the main body. So uh, I'll just turn the camera around so you can see on the, the computer when I hit the, the, the mandola soundboard. So some of you might have noticed that uh, the, and, and now it's going to change because it reads my voice but uh, the concert A is at 431 uh, some of you probably know that uh, the concert pitch right now is 440 uh, back in the day when uh, Lloyd Lord did his mandolins and like the whole mandolin family with Gibson uh, the concert pitch was 431 and I started, started to uh, kind of uh, experiment with the frequency because it, it's known that the mandolins by Gibson that were signed Lloyd Lore are like the the best sounding mandolins out there so um, for for the past few mandolins I, I've been using the 431 to, while, while tuning my components and I want to try on this mandola as well so what I'll do here on the drill press is I'll use a drill, a drill bit to uh, create the depth that I have to uh, uh, remove the wood so it, it goes down towards the ends and then I'll use a, a gouge to remove the wood and uh, and scrapers and sand sanding paper and stuff and, and carve the scroll uh, at the end here and uh, so I'll, I'll do this step quite quickly and then I'll come back for the tuning of the board itself so while you see me uh, using different tools to create the dimensions on the backboard uh, when when I start using the tap tuning the stroke tuner later what that's going to do that's going to allow me to refine those dimensions uh, two pieces of wood don't have the same stiffness so if you use the same uh, dimensions like let's say on the CNC machine uh, those dimensions are going to be identical but the sound of the plate will be different so uh, using tap tuning allows you to refine those uh, well, basically each plate to a point that you, you actually maximize the, the sound of each component of an instrument. So there is some good literature on the subject and uh, one of those is uh, The Art of Tap Tuning uh, by Roger Simonoff. Uh, that's, I'll leave a link in the, the description but uh, it's it's a great um, book to uh, to go to if you if you want to learn more about uh, tap tuning itself and if you're uh, building instrument and you, you want to venture into tap tuning uh, that book is a it's a great uh, asset to have in your library. So as the backboard starts to uh, get closer to its dimension I start to uh, uh, test for responsiveness so uh, here you can see that uh, I'm, I'm just uh, sanding down make sure there's no more uh, drill bits like the, the pilot holes that I made just make sure that they don't show anymore and then um, 
I'll be able to start uh, checking the, the responsiveness of the instrument uh, by tapping on it and then uh, with my finger and then close to my ear I can actually uh, hear if the plate is ringing after the, the, the hit from my finger and then I go back to my uh, gauge to verify dimension and at this point I want to be just over uh, dimensions so I can actually allow myself some working room for uh, the tap tuning process to refine the, the dimensions. So the mandola backboard is all rough sanded so the only thing I still need to do on the outside will be to uh, do the final sanding once the mandola is all glued up together. Uh, so now what I'll do is uh, work on the inside to uh, change my, my pitch. So I, I'm trying to get an F sharp, that's my target tuning. So uh, I'll, I'll just look at what I'm, I'm at right now. So the tuner here tells me I'm I'm an A minus thirty four cents. So if I remove material from the inside, the if I remove material from the inside, the more material I remove, the more uh, the, the note's going to lower itself. So basically I have to go through, I'm already closer to G sharp, and then I have to go through G, and then uh, I'll be in the F sharp range. So I'll, I'll just tap on it just as a reference. And then I'll use that later after I change the frequency so we can uh, hear what it sounds like. So there is a few options to remove material off uh, that curvature here. There's the orbital sander that would work. And then uh, I, I'm always fond of the, those uh, techniques that lower the amount of dust because right now I, I do have my computer in the shop. And so what I'll, I'll be using is a car scraper. I will use the orbital sander towards the end just to kind of refinish the whole surface. The more you remove in the middle as well, it's going to uh, remove, uh, lower the note faster. The, on the perimeter, it's a bit slower. So I'm at G sharp right now, plus 38. So I'm almost at G sharp right now, I'm G sharp plus 2. So while I'm, I'm tuning the backboard, what I'm using is my, uh, my gauge here to make sure I don't get too thin in, in areas. And <clears throat> so basically right now what happens is uh, even though I was going for a lower note, uh, I'm already, uh, the thinnest I can be pretty much everywhere on my backboard like the other edge here is uh in the 110 to 120th and then uh on the crown here i can't i can't go any thinner as well it's so uh I, i'm gonna leave it at g sharp so now i'm gonna play in loop uh the the three hits that i did when i first started and the three at the end there so you can hear the difference So you can really tell the difference between the, the two different uh, hits that uh, I've done on it from uh, an untuned uh, backboard to a G-sharp backboard. Uh, my target tuning was uh, uh, F-sharp that, that I said and uh, the reason for that is because I do have some uh, notes that I did from my mandolin and uh, uh, I tried to apply them on a mandola and I'm guessing uh, because it's my first mandola so I'm guessing because the backboard is bigger, uh, the ratio don't actually apply for, for that. So I took some notes and now I know that uh, G sharp is pretty much 
uh, if I don't want to compromise the backboard, it's pretty much the lowest I can get on this one. So uh, all I have to do now is uh, put my kerf on, on the outside here, just so I'm able to have a gluing surface for the backboard. And then uh, I'll be able to uh, get onto the binding and all the other stuff that I, I'll keep you guys posted uh, about as I'm finish up, finishing up the build of the, this mandola. Uh, so thanks again for uh, stopping by. Don't forget to thumbs up or uh, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Uh, I try to put a video weekly or bi-weekly and now that uh, summer is over, uh, I'll be able to keep up to date with that. I'll still have some uh, woodworking videos uh, intertwined with uh, uh, instrument building videos. So uh, uh, thanks for stopping by again and uh, I'll see you next time.